بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوة الا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا ابي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وآل الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الارضين اجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف I offer my condolences for martyrdom of Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam to Imam Mahdi ajalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif and to all of you. Regarding Laylatul Qadr, Alhamdulillah we had a uh, tawfiq to talk several times. And also during COVID, we had to to even have some programs right during Laylatul Qadr, Alhamdulillah. So in addition to what we have said before, I would like to mention uh, one thing now. And another thing, inshallah, soon, maybe, inshallah, if Allah gives us to have a kind of additional session, inshallah, for Laylatul Qadr, and when I receive all your comments, inshallah, because uh, I want to a little bit explore more the meaning of Idraq of Laylatul Qadr, and uh, some ideas have uh, come to my mind so inshallah if I am ready then inshallah I will share with you so tonight what we talk about is about what to ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Laylatul Qadr we can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that we need and we should do so. We especially must make sure that we prioritize the most important ones. And those are the things that relate to our Iman, to our felicity, to our uh, eternal happiness to our community, to humanity, and everything else, every big and a small thing, we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we can prioritize these things. And we can also add to our request, a common or a general request from Allah to give us whatever benefits us, which we missed to ask. We should try our best first, not that just we make one dua, Allah gives us, you know, everything you know we need. No. As much as possible, try to detail out hajat requests, but it's also good to add that, oh Allah, you know, there are things that have not come to my mind. And you know that I need them, you know that they improve my condition. Please also grant me those things. So we should ask for all these things with priorities. We should pray for others. Above all, we should pray for Imam Mahdi Jalallah Ta'ala Farjo Sharif, for Mu'mineen, for people who have rights upon us, for all humanity, etc. But one of the things that is very uh, inclusive and it's very good to ask all the time uh, and in particular in Laylatul Qadr is Al Afiya. Al Afiya is very important. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is quoted as saying 
in response to someone who asked him, in ana adrak to laylat al qadr fama as'al rabbi if i do idrak of laylat al qadr what should i ask my lord for he said al afiyah this hadith is in mustadrak al wasail by haji nuri and it's in volume 7 page 458 Rasulullah said if you as you say manage to do a drag of Laylatul Qad ask for Afia I want to share with you some hadith about Afia and then explain what is Afia and how we should all ask for Afiyah, inshallah, in Laylatul Qadr. In Mizanul Hikmah, volume 3, starting from page uh, 2022, there is a section on Al Afiyah. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said al afiyatu ni'matun khafiyya idha wujadat nusiyat wa idha fuqidat dhukirat afiyah is a hidden blessing when it's there it's forgotten when it is not there it is remembered unfortunately when we have afiyah we don't notice we take it for granted Amir al muminin alayhi salam said al afiyatu ahna an na'am which becomes ahna an na'am the most pleasing and enjoyable blessing is afiyah he also said ayya ayyuhan nas sallallahu al yaqeen warghabu ilayhi fil afiyah فَإِنَّ أَجَلَّ النِّعْمَةِ الْعَافِيَةِ O people, ask Allah for certainty and ask Him for afiyah because the greatest blessing is afiyah. We have lots of hadiths, I'm just uh, saying some of them. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said Man sarrahu tulul afiyah fal yattaqillah If someone makes him happy to have long time of afiyah should have taqwa taqwa helps in having afiyah Amir al-Mumin alayhi salam said al afiyatu ashratu ajza afiyah has Ten parts because it's not happening by chance. Tis atun minha fasamt illa bizikrillah. Nine of ten factors or parts of Afia is to be silent except for remembrance of Allah. It means that with what we say how much we can endanger our afiyah or lose afiyah wa wahidun fi tark mujalasat as-sufaha you didn't expect afiyah is so much connected with hikmah one of tens is to leave sitting with people who are not you know aqil who are not intelligent, who are not, you know, wise, who are not rational. There is a hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, Salu rabbakum al-afiyata, al-affab al-afiyah. 
فا انکم لستم من رجال البلا امام صادق says ask your lord to give you af and afia to keep things for you easy and give you afia inshallah i will explain meaning of afia because you are not people who can cope with bala with difficult calamities he imam says before you in bani israel there were people that with uh, manashir uh, with uh, what is called in english the for the carpenters use for ca- saw. Ah. saw yeah so they were uh, because of their iman they put them you know on maybe bed or something and were trying to cut them but they didn't stop Allah and yu'tu al-kufr falam yu'tu they said you know you should not become kafir otherwise we will cut you with this they said no so Imam Sadiq says you are not at that level so ask for afiyah Someone went to Rasulullah. This is very beautiful. All of it, of course, are beautiful. He said, what is the best dua? Rasulullah said, Tas'alu rabbaka al-affa wal-afiyata fa dunya wal-akhir. Ask your Lord for af, for pardon and afiyya. In dunya and akhir. Summa atahu min al-ghad. He went again tomorrow and asked the Prophet the same question. Maybe he was not satisfied. I don't know why he repeated the question. Rasulullah gave the same answer. The third day, the same answer. The fourth day, again he said, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, ayyud dua afbal. Rasulullah said, Tas'alu rabbaka al-affa wal-afiyata fa dunya wal-akhira. You ask your Lord for af and afiyah. Then he said, Fa'innaka idha u'titahuma fi dunya thumma u'titahuma fi al-akhira faqad aflahtaha. If you are given af and afiyah in dunya and the hereafter, you have reached falah. We have reached felicity, salvation. In another hadith, he said, "Salullah al-Mu'afat, fa innu lam yu'ta ahadun ba'd al-yaqin khayran min al-Mu'afat." After certainty, nothing is given better than Mu'afat. Uh, there is also something beautiful from Imam Kazim alayhi salam. I am, as I said, there are many hadiths. I'm just selecting some. Imam Kazim alayhi salam, according to this hadith, which is reported here from Da'awat by Ravandi, he said in his dua, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afiyah wa as'aluka jameel al-afiyah. وأسألك شكر العافية وأسألك شكر شكر العافية Oh Allah, I ask you for afiyah I ask you beautiful afiyah Not afiyah which comes after pain and hardship I ask you gratitude for afiyah I ask you for gratitude, for gratitude, for afia. It means to be thankful for afia, and then to be thankful that I was thankful. Because, you know, shock itself is a blessing, and you need to be grateful for being grateful. So, so much emphasis on al-afia, and now you can better understand why Rasulullah said to the person who said, if I do a drag of Laylatul Qad, why should what should I ask? Rasulullah said, Al Afiyah. 
این صحیفه سجادی امام زین العابدین علیه السلام حضر دعا ابوت عافیه و کان من دعایه علیه السلام اذا سأل الله العافیه و شکرها like here we had in Imam Qadim you ask for afia and you ask for shukr for afia or he was asking for afia and he was sh- doing shukr of afia depending whether we read shukraha or shakaraha his dua is starting with salawat you know in Saifi Sajjadiyya Imam is very committed in repeating salawat Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa alih. Please listen carefully how much Imam repeats al-afiyah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa alih. Wa albisni afiyatak. Wa jallilni afiyatak. Wa hassinni bi afiyatak. Wa akrimni bi afiyatak. Wa aghnini bi afiyatak. Wa tasaddaq alayya bi afiyatak. وهب لي عافيتك وفرشني عافيتك وأصلح لي عافيتك ولا تفرق بيني وبين عافيتك في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم صل على محمد وآله وعافني عافية كافية شافية عالية نامية عافية تولد في بدني العافية عافية الدنيا والآخرة Very beautiful it's brief please go to the translation I give you an idea but reflect more oh Allah please send the best of your salutations to the Prophet and his family and please give me dress of afia he has compared afia to a like a lebas a dress put on me the dress of afia and cover me with your afia and protect me with your afia and honor me with your afia and make me rich with your afia and give as sadaqa to me afia grant me as gift afia uh, put afia like carpet like a or like a bed farash or farsh uh, correct and put in order for me your afia and don't separate between me and your afia in dunya and akhirah Allahumma salla ala muhammadin wa alih and please give me afia which is adequate which is healing which is high which is growing afia which is growing afia which creates in my body afia afia of dunya afia of akhirah you see imam keeps mentioning afia he could use pronoun but he didn't use pronoun he keeps mentioning Afia. One of the great and many people, or maybe there is agreement, but at least we can say most of ulama say it's the greatest commentary of Sahifi Sajjadiyya is Riyadh al-Salikin by Sayyid Ali Khan, who has also a commentary on Samadiyya Fennah. This great alim who was especially uh, expert on Arabic literature. He says, the reason Imam Sajjad السلام, repeated Afia is لمزيد العناية والاهتمام بشأنها to say that how important it is and how much concern is there. وَقَرَعًا لِبَابِ الْإِلْحَاحِ الْمَنْدُوبِ إِلَيْهِ فِي الدُّعَى In dua, when you request Allah, it's good to insist in a nice way. Not insist on getting from Him, but insist on giving, you know, making request. There's a difference. You know, sometimes, you know, I say, you know, give me, give me, uh, and in the sense of demanding and complaining. No, but I can humbly mention, keep saying he loves if you keep repeating and insisting. al to insist is good in dua. So, 
He says, Imam Zain al-Abidin is knocking the door of al which is recommended in dua. And getting pleasure from just uttering this name, Afia, Afia. وَبَسْتَنْ لِلْخِطَابِ حَيْثُ الْإِسْقَاءُ مَطْلُوبُ One of the things that we have in Ilm al rhetorics is that sometimes you like to prolong your conversation when you are talking to a beloved or to a person you love the conversation with you try to prolong ha, uh, Imam Zain al could just say ha use pronoun but he wants to make it longer because, you know, conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, please reflect on uh, this, to at least read the translation of, in Sayyid uh, Jadir. You see how much emphasis is put on Afiyah. There is a hadith that uh, it is attributed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which says, ما سئل الله شيئا أحب إليه من أن يسأل العافية. Allah has not been asked for anything which is dearer to Him than asking Him for عافية. So, Afiyah is a very good thing to ask. So, and in Laylatul Qad, we should ask for Afiyah. But, what is Afiyah? Even when Rasulullah informed Amirul Mu'minin that he would be, uh, you know, killed and become martyr in months of Ramadan, the question that Imam had, what was it? was is it going to be fi, uh, a condition of salama fi dini, which is related to afia inshallah i will explain we have to refer to the words of experts to find out what is the meaning of afia one of the best books on uh, arabic uh, etymology is al al Munir. al fayyumi in al al Munir, he says, Afahullah means Maha Anhul Asqam, means Allah removed from him all illnesses. وَالْعَافِيَةُ إِسْمٌ مِنْ Afiyah is the noun from the verb afa. Afa, yu'afi, mu'afatan means to remove any illness, anything that is, you know, like disliked. Sayyid Ali Khan, the commentator of Sahifi Sajjadiyye, that I quoted from him, few points, he says, آفاه الله من المكروه معافاتا و آفیتا means وهب له العافية and what does it mean? look at this beautiful sentence what is آفیا؟ هي دفاع الله عن العبد Allah defends his servant anything bad, anything disliked in dunya, in آخرة about body, about spirit, about iman, about family, about community. Allah defends and puts you in a safe environment. In another place he says, al mutanawilatun li daf'i jami' al-makruhat fil badane wal batane wal dine wal dunya wal akhira Afiyah includes defending against anything which is disliked with respect to body, to the inner self, religion, this world, 
hereafter. And then he says, وَهِيَ لَفْظٌ جَامِعٌ لَأَنْوَاءِ خَيْرِ الدَّارَةِ This is a term which includes all the good things of dunya and akhirah. Because if you don't have this defense from Allah, if you don't have this safety and the ease, the peace, the comfort, the ability to concentrate and lots of good things that it brings. If we don't have this, we are not able to proceed. All challenges happen to us. Uh, so this is why that hadith of Rasulullah, you know, says that Allah has not been asked for anything dearer to him than being asked for afiyah. So, uh, unfortunately, I have to go uh, now, uh, but think about it. Inshallah, if Allah gives us tawfiq, we would have maybe a session to talk about what is Idraq of Laylatul Qad, inshallah, maybe tomorrow uh, afternoon, tomorrow night, uh, UK time. Uh, and we will see, inshallah, how much Allah guides us in this process. So, inshallah, include in your du'as for Laylatul Qad and put it on, on top of your list. Afiyah for your deen, for akhirah. Ya waliya al-afiyah, nas'aluka al-afiyah. Afiyat al-deen wa dunya wa al-akhirah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Adameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Uh, I'll give you talk fiqh, Sheikh, and the next okay. uh, commitment. So shall we, shall we follow up on, on a follow up to this, uh, yeah. to this session, as you were saying? Yes, inshallah. So yes. Okay. Inshallah for tomorrow, uh, but uh, maybe on Telegram we can uh, confirm we'll the we'll time which suit, suits, inshallah. 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 Al-Tamasra. Al-Tamasra. Thank you very much. Khudafas. Al-Tamasra. Khudafas. 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 Khudafas.